minimum five-year commitment of my life to build this political movement to get mm. real change. But and, that's and the point, isn't we it? Know that's what the we minimum. I think that's what you're saying this morning. It's not, yes. just a, it's not just that minimum commitment. You are committed, if you get into Parliament, you are committed as well to leading yes. this centre-right uh, coalition and leading it with the aim of becoming Prime Minister in 2029 or whenever it is. That is absolutely right. That's our ambition and we believe it's achievable. And what many people say who are critics of yours, uh, and you were saying the other day when you were attacked in the street that it was an affront to democracy, and I think a lot of people who are mm. critics of yours would have said, yes, that's true. But they also point to your friendship with Donald Trump, who tried to overturn uh, a, a free election and say actually Nigel Farage is not necessarily a Democrat at heart and his friendship with Trump is part of the proof of that. Well I've been around for 30 years exactly 30 years ago I was campaigning in a by-election I was elected to the European Parliament just over 25 years ago so I've been around a long time uh, and if there was anything in me that was fundamentally anti-democratic I think you would have discovered it by now. Well your friendship as as with Trump's Trump concerned. is what some suggest. Well hang on as far as Trump's concerned, of course I want Trump back in the White House. I think but he was why? A because he tried to overturn a democratic election. Because I, well, that's a matter of opinion. That's Is a matter it? of opinion. Is what it? Happened, uh, what, what's well, your yes, opinion? What happened? What happened on January the sixth should not have happened. Of that, there's no doubt whatsoever. Did he actually urge people to storm the Capitol building? No, he didn't. But the point I'm making is this. No, hang, hang on a second. Just on Trump, I'll let you get to that point. But just on Trump, to, to be absolutely clear about this, are you saying yeah. that it is a matter of opinion that he tried to overturn a democratic election? Well, he said go in peace to the protesters, but they didn't. He, he didn't mean go in peace, did he? And he wanted, I mean, crucially, he wanted his vice president not to confirm that the election was free and fair. He wanted his vice president to do it, put enormous pressure on him to do it. it, it do you approve of that or not approve of it? No, it, no I, I don't approve of objecting to elections, even though I object to much of what's happening in our system right. with postal vote corruption and many other things. Right, OK, so you're clear about that. He, d he did lose the 2020 election and he should not have tried to overturn it. I think he lost it uh, because the law did nothing to prevent ballot harvesting itself. Is there a risk within your own party? I mean, we've had several cases, the most recent one last night, Grant Sinclair Armstrong, one of your candidates who'd, who'd previously mm. supported the BNP. D d can you guarantee to people... Um, who are thinking of voting reform this time round, that you have got rid of all the unpleasant people or people who have unpleasant pasts that are standing? Well, this particular case is a chap in his 70s who tw 20 years ago said he was thinking of, of voting BNP as a protest vote. He was never a member of the BNP. However, however, we don't find that acceptable. Now, we did put in place, with quite a well-known political figure who runs a professional vetting company. We put in place something, we spent a great deal of money on getting that vetting done. It wasn't done, and I'll talk more about that over the next couple of days. With a short general election, every party is having problems with candidates. But effectively, when you vote, there are really, really, the choices are not so much the candidates in the constituencies. We've almost got a presidential style now. People are voting for or against Keir Starmer, Rishi Sunak, Ed Davey or me. They're the names that are really on the ballot paper. If you are to be a serious voice of opposition, you will have to deal with problems that are complex. There is no question about that. And I want to put to you something Rachel Reeves has told the Financial Times this morning. So she's absolutely plain about it. She says in her constituency, people voted leave because it was a matter of immigration. They wanted less immigration and no mm. immigration. Mm. That's why they voted leave. But she says, I don't think anyone voted leave because they weren't happy that chemicals regulations were the same across Europe. And she's talking now about Labour potentially getting close closer to Europe when it comes to regulation. Mm. Do you, do, so, for instance, in the chemicals industry, but other industries as well, where real people's real jobs are at stake because of the costs that we're either putting on them or thinking of putting on them, it, 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 are you willing to compromise in those areas? Can you foresee a relationship with the European Union that is actually closer? Well, this whole debate typifies things, doesn't it? When we talk about business, all we ever talk about are the giant corporates. In this case, you're talking about chemical companies, pharmaceutical companies. There is a huge chunk of the economy that feels betrayed 
for the way in which the Conservatives have not delivered Brexit. And this is where the real engine of growth, income and tax revenues what, will come What, you just let from. the big companies and, go hang? And, uh, why don't we talk about small companies for once? Well, we let's talk, talk about, about both. The five and a half. But, but the big companies well, are no, no. But that's the problem, people, Justin. No one ever does. No one ever does. And the Conservatives don't talk about it, and Labour don't talk about it. There are five and a half million men and women out there doing their best as sole traders or running their own companies. And what we want to do is to lift the VAT threshold. What we want to do is to cut corporation tax back to a sensible rate so that people can reinvest in their businesses. And what we want to do is to get rid of the appalling IR35 rules, making it so difficult now for anybody to be self-employed. Mm. They get no sickness benefit, they take hardly any holidays, and that's where the driver but of real economic growth is going to come but from. But lots of them and also that's say we'd like different. to be able to export to all Europe Rachel more easily. Reeves, all, Re all Rachel Reeves can do is talk about big corporate businesses, the Tories are the same. Now, when it comes to the big corporates and doing business mm. overseas, the one very encouraging marker is that at the time of Brexit, we were the seventh biggest exporter in the world. We are now the fourth biggest exporter in the world. And here's the thing. Important though business with Europe and trade with Europe is, it is a declining part of the global economy. And the encouraging thing is we're starting to do more and more business with the 85% of the global economy yeah, that is outside that, the European Union. That's a general answer, but I'm asking you about a chemicals industry that is saying plainly that they are facing £2 billion, they say, of extra costs because we'd have to have our own standards authority if we can't do some kind of a deal with Europe. And you are just saying, as I understand it, tough. They'll just have to take the costs and I we'll think have we're to suffer the consequences. Capable. I think we're perfectly capable of regulating and running our own industries. And the tragedy of this is the other group of people, I mean, Rachel Reeves was right to say people voted for much lower immigration and have been completely betrayed by the Conservatives. She's right to say that, although interestingly, Labour's six-point manifesto plan doesn't even mention immigration, so don't expect mm. folks any change there at yeah. all. Don't expect any change there at all. But it does, doesn't mention immigration, uh, and yet, as you yourself had sa have said, they are likely to get not just a majority, possibly a very big majority. Doesn't that tell you something mm. actually about where people are? They are willing indeed, it seems, well, quite keen on voting for a party that doesn't mention it in its six pledges. No, it doesn't mention immigration, and it also doesn't mention small business in terms of helping them the way that I've just done a few moments ago with you. And I think a lot of people in the polls who are saying we're going to vote Labour are saying it out of total disgust at the repeated broken promises of a Tory party that pretends to be for low immigration and low taxes and has done the opposite. And, and that's really why I'm launching today this contract in South Wales. You've had 25 years there of a Labour government, taxes are higher, spending per head is higher, and yet returns on the NHS and education, let alone the 20 mile an hour speed limits, are worse. So our argument is, if you're telling the pollsters now you want to vote Labour because you're disgusted with the Tories, have a look at what we've got to say. We're on your side. Right. We're unashamedly patriotic and we believe that immigration, the exploding population, should be the major issue in this election. Nigel Farage, we've got to leave it there. Thank you very much.